A new offensive coordinator means a new offensive philosophy has come to LA. Breaking news, Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore. Kellen Moore. Hired by the Chargers to be their next offensive coordinator. And I know Chargers fans, more than anything, want to understand what that philosophy actually is. Having the marriage of the run in the past. It puts defense in conflict. If we understand the scheme that we're about to see on the field, then we're gonna get better context for everything that's gone on in free agency, as well as what's about to happen in the draft. The Los Angeles Chargers select. I have poured over the tape for weeks to chart everything that Kellen Moore did on offense last year when he was running the Cowboys offense. And I can summarize his system in two key words, aggression and adaptability. We have two parts to this tape study series. Part one today is gonna to be all about the aggression and adaptability that you're about to see with the run game. And part two, of course, is gonna be on the passing game and all of the fun stuff that Coach Moore has cooked up for us there. So with that being said, let's get to the film. First things first, when looking at how Kellen Moore ran the Cowboys offense last year, which was fourth in points per game, fifth in third down efficiency, and first in red zone touchdown scoring percentage, all lofty marks, of course. When studying that offense, you need to understand the type of balance that they were going for. Dallas was ninth in the NFL in run pass ratio with 47.3 of their plays being runs, but that run pass ratio really depended on what personnel grouping they were in. The Cowboys were 10th in the league in the usage of what are called 12 personnel packages, meaning one back and two tight ends. And they love that package so much because it gave them more bigger bodies on the field. And in particular, a wider surface area at the line of scrimmage, which we'll get to what that means in just a second. From that personnel package, Dallas ran the ball 63.4% of the time, which is a lot. You compare that to when they were in 11 personnel, meaning one back, one tight end, three receivers on the field. And in that grouping, they only ran the ball 32.8% of the time. So there's a massive difference. The personnel grouping that the Cowboys were in more or less gave a good indicator of whether they were running the ball or not, which you might think would be a bad thing, but it really wasn't because of how Moore had designed the run game to function. Let's take a look at this play against the Colts to help explain what I mean by that. This is a 12 personnel look, again, meaning one back, two tight ends, and this is a good view of what I mentioned earlier, which is creating a wider surface area. You've got a lot of potential gaps here from right to left because you have more bigger bodies tight within the core of the formation. C, B, A, A, B, C, D. And then you have the second tight end acting as a quasi fullback who can insert anywhere along the surface to essentially create a new gap on the fly. The Colts have eight guys in the box here against seven blockers, but those numbers don't really matter because if you have the right run called from the right formation against the right type of defensive front, you're still gonna have success. This is outside zone, which the Cowboys ran 38% of the time out of 12 personnel alone, and it was by far their most common run from this grouping. And they're running it against what some coaches refer to as a flex front from Indianapolis. If you go into the Georgia Bulldogs playbook, or really any modern playbook, they're littered with looks just like this one, and this is one of the most common fronts that you'll see from any nickel package on any defense. Now, this is an ideal front to run outside zone against because this alignment by the interior defensive lineman, meaning the three technique spot and the two eye technique spot, those alignments help to create some natural angles for these double teams to work. Offensive line coaches call these scoop blocks, by the way. And you can see what those look like right now on the backside three technique to Forrest Buckner and how much movement that scoop block generates. The first thing that you need to understand before we even get to those scoop blocks is how outside zone is actually read by the running back. None of these blocks are even necessarily required to win for this run to be successful, which is why you can run it even when you don't have a numbers advantage in the box. The running back is reading it front to back, meaning he's starting on the furthest gap outside to the front side of the play. And then if that gap has a body in it or if the edge is set, then he'll just keep reading gap to gap front to back until they see a crease develop. So for instance, in the case of this run, the edge is set here just based on the alignment of the defensive end alone. So this really had no shot of getting outside anyway. So that front side C gap is closed. Meanwhile, you have the center absolutely fighting for his life against Grover Stewart, who's one of the very best nose tackles in the NFL, so he's definitely gonna lose that. But that's okay again, because we don't really need him to win. We just need Stewart pinned into one of those gaps so that Ezekiel Elliott can read it and then cut off of that behind the center's hip. Right as Zeke gets the handoff, he's already planting to make that cut. 
And on the back side, you can see that insert block from the tight end that I alluded to before, creating that extra gap on the fly. All while the backside scoop block onto Forrest Buckner drives him into the next county over. Zeke is reading all of this in a split second, front to back, to find the crease as it develops, and as soon as he sees a blue jersey flash into his gap, he moves on to the next one, until eventually he hurdles over the corpse of Buckner, gets his 10 yards, and moves the chains. Like I said, it's okay if the defense knows that you're running the ball, and it's okay if they pack the box with 8 plus defenders, because if you have that right call on for the situation, you're still going to win. Now, you may be wondering, okay, well, what happens if a defense lines up in a front that's good at stopping outside zone? What does Kellen Moore do then as a coach? Well, look no further than the Bengals game back in week two. Bengals defensive coordinator Lou Anarumo, you know, he has eyes, so he was keenly aware that the Cowboys were going to try to run outside zone from all of these 12 personnel looks, mind you. So in that game, he employed a bunch of tight fronts and modified bare fronts. If you don't know what a bear front is, in a typical bear front, you have the nose tackle head up on the center now. He's in a true zero technique. He's not in a shade. And then two, three techniques on either side. The important part is that you have a nose playing both A gaps and then both B gaps are covered and hard edges are being set to both sides by the edge players. And what this accomplishes is it sets up the linebackers to kind of just seek and destroy from the second level against outside zone without having to worry about anything. If you run outside zone to the weak side against this front, it is really hard to get vertical displacement on a true head up zero technique because it is a long, long way for that guard to go to eventually make contact. So you don't generate that much movement. And because it's a head up zero and not a two eye like we saw from Grover Stewart in that flex front, the center doesn't lose immediately and instead they kind of just die slow which is worse because that means the seam is not opening up immediately, so the running back has to string themselves out for longer, waiting for that seam to open up, and then by the time they do finally cut, the backside pursuit is already there. That happened a couple of times against Cincy, and Dallas was pretty much just going backwards. And then to compound that even more, if you try running outside zone the other direction to the strong side against a bare front, again, the nose is just gonna play a lag technique on you and hang out in that backside A gap, then the front side double team, they pretty much have no time to stick, so you don't get any movement on that. The front side four eye is just gonna win back to the inside, and once again, you're dead in the water. The Cowboys tried this three times and it just didn't work. So why am I showing you this? Well, because like all good coaches, Kellen Moore knows how to make adjustments. This is in the fourth quarter of a very tight ball game, after those tackles for loss, mind you. And once again, the Bengals are lining up in that bare front on first and 10. They are waiting for outside zone. The Cowboys motion Dalton Schultz back into the core to give themselves another wide surface area, like we talked about before. And the run that Moore dialed up here wasn't outside zone. It was a run that was specifically designed to punish a bare front. Good old GT counter. Instead of trying to win on a double team and creating vertical displacement and waiting for a seam to open and all the stuff we talked about with zone, the whole point of GT counter is to make the seam where you want it to be by creating a numbers advantage to the front side. So for instance, you're pulling the backside guard and the backside tackle here, that's the GT part of GT counter, and you're back blocking on the backside three technique with the center. You're also pinning the nose to the backside with the front side guard, and you're pinning the front side three technique with a lateral double team by the front side tackle and tight end. You're basically just building a wall of bodies and trying to trap as many Bengals behind it as you can. And while that's happening, the pulling guard is gonna kick out the furthest outside defender that he sees. And the tackle is gonna wrap up and through that to kick out the second defender. This then pretty much creates a situation where the Mike linebacker can't win. He has to just choose a side on this front side tight end. And Tony Pollard here, he's just gonna run off of whichever hip of the tight end is open. This is how you create a seam against a bare front. And the Cowboys, or more specifically Kellen Moore, was able to scheme his way into 30 yards on the ground on just two carries on this concept before the Bengals just stopped lining up that way because they were tired of getting gashed. Like I said before, if the Chargers want to run the ball this year, they're going to run the ball. And there's not a whole lot that any defense can do to stop it. 
because at the end of the day, any front can be run on and any personnel grouping can be run on. You just need to have the right offensive mind at the helm that knows which run to call and when. Luckily for Chargers fans, Kellen Moore is that offensive mind.